Welcome to our roundtable review. We are discussing, uh, man, the most recent message in our newest series that we're going through, Rise Up and Build, found in Nehemiah, talking about the story of Nehemiah rebuilding the walls. And yesterday, we went over an incredible message, I think, called Get the Gate. Get the Gate! Get the Gate! <laughs> What did you guys? Let the dog out. I yeah. preached it. What'd you get? Oh, okay. So I, I love out of the one. gate. Come out of the gate. Come out of the gate. Come out of the gate and say what we like. I love the fact that one, your story, your illustration, painted this picture for me. You know, obviously hunting a lot and going through those different things and being told by dad or grandpa like, hey, get the gate. Like you automatically knew what it was. But I love the premise in which you set that up too. To automatically say, okay, what are you, what are you allowing in that gate? What are you, what are you allowing to come in? What are you allowing to go out? Like everything hinges, pun intended, on that gate being open or closed and, and what you're allowing in. So it, it really paints a picture for where we're going today in our discussion. Yeah. My also thought on getting the gate, uh, I was thinking about if you ever watched the movie Troy. Or uh, you know about the the myth of Achilles, Achilles. and and uh, and uh, oh, what's his name? The uh, the Trojan guy, Brad? No, Pitt? <laughs> Brad Pitt. <laughs> no, the guy who plays the other one. I'm trying to remember his, uh, his character's name. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. matter. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, side note. But anyway, I, I thought about <laughs> Brad. Literally, Orlando Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They say you know that that Troy could never be overtaken because of the size of its walls. Mm -hmm. And because of the strength of its gate, uh, but because they didn't inspect when they let in the Trojan what force, they let in. Right. and they left it in there overnight, um, it, it didn't matter that the gate was how strong it was or how strong the wall was. And so I just every time you were saying that, I was just picturing them guys busting out of the the Trojan horse and invading and and sacking the city. Um, and so that really hit home for me. I also thought about. Uh, there's so many illustrations here we get the gate mm. but in farming as well you never leave a gate open behind you right. because the cows can get out or go through whatever you have always 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 close the gate never leave it open behind you um, because even if you think that there's no danger lurking you never know what could come in or out right. um, and so always being prepared to have that gate watched and being a gatekeeper I thought was, was great yeah no I love that man inspect what you're allowing in mm -hmm. and that kind of just takes us right into yep. the first point i love that extra thought that's what this is for the round table review it's for you to ask the questions and and go back and reconsider not just let it be a great mess oh it's such a good message okay sure. good praise god i'm glad that i did my job but but what did it really speak what what adjustments are you actually making what did you take home and apply, yeah. inspect what you're allowing in. So what are those things right now that you took home to apply yesterday? I, I wrote down something you said and it, it really hit me hard is you, we don't get to fail to plan and then blame it on God when it doesn't work out. Like when, when we should have taken the time to number one, like we discussed, to examine. Like Nehemiah did, he, he prayed, he prepared, he planned. He, he went into this with with thought, and then when it doesn't work out, like you can't just say, oh, well, God just didn't show up. No, 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 we, we have to do our part. We have to do the examination, and that's why it was so important for Nehemiah to take the time to, to walk around the walls, to examine not just the walls but the gates in its entirety to see where, where they need to be tear down where they need to get out man what what's not going to last 400 years from now when jesus the savior of the world walks around man this what gate. this gate right here so it's it's that thought thinking of just what what holds the future like what what decision are you making or what thought or decision needs examination right now in your life that could potentially impact your children and your children's children so on and so forth and of course you got there a little later on the message as well yeah and I, as we were talking about examining it 
I just kept thinking about what's the hardest exam I've ever taken in my life. Hmm. ACT was pretty tough. So a lot of the papers I had to write in college, exegetical papers, research papers were pretty tough. But there's an exam that we must have take every day, and it's really hard. It's the hardest one we face, and it's examining ourselves. Yeah. As human beings, we're not very good of being objective yeah. about ourself yeah. and examining ourselves. That's one of the things that I find hardest about, uh, in particular, playing golf. It's all about the breakdown of how you're swinging, your mechanics, right. and that the fight against yourself to be better than, than you were the day before every time. We're not good at that and taking a step back and looking. And so that's where, to me, the Holy Spirit really comes in, in that conviction, in illuminating the truth of who you are, what your life looks like, your actions, and helping examine ourselves uh, at, before we act, before yeah. we before we even put anything into motion. Okay, where right. truly, what where are we at? What's what's going on here? Is there even a wall? Is there a gate? Well, am I just allowing anything to come in and out? Right. And really taking a, a a big picture view of ourselves. Well, let's let's from a practical standpoint, my my question for myself is, what does my prayer life look like? Yep. Because if those things come from the Holy Spirit, which we believe them to, and this is more than just spiritual speech here, this is legitimately, if I were to track the time that I spend in prayer yeah. in a weekly basis, or, or maybe I just, let's just track the time that I even have it scheduled in yeah. my plan, my week. Where are those times? What are those times that I have planned to spend time with God in prayer? Yes, speaking and presenting my request, but also just meditating on His Word and yielding before Him where I say nothing but Jesus every time I get distracted so that I can actually hear from Him and I give Him those opportunities to not just me examine but him to expose, which right. is what we didn't get into yesterday and have all that time, but allowing God to expose the areas of my life that need to be examined yeah. and then not becoming defensive if he decides to use somebody that I don't like to show me that area. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, to me, uh, and it gets into number two, when you examine yourself, when you take the time, right, to examine your schedule, mm -hmm. like say, for instance, you're trying to, map out, man, what's the best time that works for you to, to read, to do the five, five, and five, right? To pray, to worship, to say to, it again. To, to do those things that you need to do to put in proper place to say, I, okay, I, God, I need to be your vessel that you pour into and pour out, pour out of. So when you examine your schedule, when you examine that, to me, I, I have to understand that, okay, I know that my schedule I'm going to make my schedule, it's not going to make me. And so if I plan and put into place to prioritize... Unless I don't, those, and it does. Right, exactly. And so for me, I have to expect, like for this this morning, for instance, uh, man, I had my, you know, we all have alarm clocks for a reason. Wake up, 6, 6.30, that was my plan. Uh, I examined my week, and that was going to work out for my schedule. Kinley had something in mind you know i have to expect opposition sometimes yes, it is tough from a, from it a is tough with, with babies that <laughs> but, was a tough season but for me i expecting that and knowing that i can't let uh the things that may get in the way determine me not having or spending time with god i've got to be intentional and prioritize that time to make sure that hey i am spending time with the lord I am letting him speak to me, stop yeah. talking just to listen. So for you in the season that you're in, right. important if you're listening to this right now is that you understand that this isn't this isn't like a diet. Right. Like this isn't something that I'm going to try for a little while and then it's going to taper off again. This is an ongoing mm -hmm. process that a prayer life is something that has to be developed. Yeah. Spending time in God's word consistently is something that has to be developed. Learning to worship God with your lifestyle and in a worship session on purpose, just praising. All of those things, these are not just m momentary decisions. Like, I'm going back to the gym. No, 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 <laughs> hang on. This is a lifestyle. Right. Like, I'm going to get healthy. And this is how I'm going to get healthy. But the objective is not just what I do, although those are important. Mm -hmm. 
but the objective is why I am doing this. Right. And so if I miss a day because Kinley jumped up, or woke up, and right. I used to let that ruin my morning, right. it would ruin my day, and now I haven't spent time with Jesus, and now I'm walking around, and I'm, <laughs> I'm failing my father, and God's like, hey, son, why don't you just do it tomorrow? Yeah. Or, or why don't you just do it at lunch? Right. Why don't you just do it this evening? You know, just making this more of a, this examination specifically. You failed, you failed the test. That's not even what the scripture right. says. It's saying you failed to even stop and take the test. Yeah. Okay, you missed a date. How about let's reschedule? Yeah. Make up. <laughs> make up test. <laughs> it's a make up test. Yeah. Yay. God gets 70 times 7 make up tests in the same day. Yeah. Apparently, according to Jesus. Yeah. That to to plug our scripture reading for the week, it's enduring spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And he actually quotes Nehemiah, uh, I believe on the second day. So check that out. But one of the things that he mentions in there is he uh and and, and the way I see it. You know, we, we try to credit the devil and the enemy with a lot of things. Yeah, I'm having a bad day. The devil's just working against me. But then all of a sudden, when we actually try to do something for God and we face opposition, we're surprised. Yeah. Like, well, I'm doing this for God. Shouldn't this be, like, shouldn't he be helping me? Obviously, he's not. <laughs> he this is. should You're be not easy. <laughs> exactly. And so one of the things he says you should, and, and what we're talking about, expecting opposition. Whenever you're about to do something big for God, mm -hmm. the enemy loves nothing more than to try to mess that up. Yeah. And you mentioned that yesterday. He would love nothing more than for you to give you everything that you wanted as long as it kept you out of God's will, as right. long as it kept you from fulfilling God's purpose. And so expecting opposition, a lot of times we credit him for little things throughout our life, but then all of a sudden when we face something big, when we're trying to do something for God, we're, we're all shocked and surprised that, that life can be tough. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and I over-preached it. I did, but man, I was just like, oh, I need people to get this. Please mm -hmm. understand these obvious enemies that arise every time i have seen you've seen it we've yeah. we've all seen it with people who give their lives to jesus compromise kicks in i mean like day one as soon as you open your phone on the bus from camp yep. compromise and then and the enemy's always offering a counterfeit to the authentic it's like it's his trademark right he's not doing anything new right He's doing the same things in a different way for this generation. My children asked me last night, because in children's church, they had the story of the sons of Sceva. Yeah, who, yeah, which is awesome. So my kids are learning about Paul casting demons out of people in the book of Acts. And they come home and they're asking me questions. And they were like, what about these sons of Sceva? Well, the sons of Sceva, they went into the opposition and they said, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. And that devil looked back at him and said, Paul, I know. Yeah. Jesus, I know. Who are you? Yeah. It, it, you can't come up against the opposition of yeah. this life, much less the powers and principalities of darkness, yeah. in your own strength. But when you expect opposition and it raises its head, you rebuke the compromise. Yeah. You call out the counterfeit. You become the clarity in the midst of the chaos. That is, to me, the explanation of telling my children last week. They asked me, God, Daddy, why doesn't, why don't demons, like, does, do people still act like that? You know, like, in the movies, they're all so scary because they're watching Superbook and they're like, yeah. walking around. Well, demons aren't that dumb anymore. Like, they've learned along the way that it's, it's better for them to be subtle than so obvious. Because right, yeah. if somebody walks in here with an obvious demon, we're going to take that person into your office and we're going to anoint them with oil and everybody out here is still going to worship. Nobody's right. going to know it happened. But, but we have demons sitting in this sanctuary like this. Hmm. They've learned to be subtle yeah. and secretive and only reveal themselves in the private places because when they come out in public, or they come out in public, it's just when that when the enemy gets ready to expose you at your worst. Yeah, we uh, real quickly on that. We talked about this in our breakdown small group when we were discussing uh, prayer and fasting and, and then the Holy Spirit. And I mentioned that story of the sons of Sceva, and I was like, and they said, you know, we would know Paul, we know Jesus. I said, obviously this isn't the goal, but how cool would it have been if they were like, I know Dylan. And I know Paul, and I know Jesus. Right. <laughs> and I was like, but we should be able to operate in that. Like, uh, there's that old saying, like, you want to wake up in the morning, and your feet hit the ground, and the devil's like, oh, no, he's up. Yeah. Oh, no, she's up. Right. Like, right. you know, we got to be on our toes. But, like, we have that it's ability. Ted Roberts. Yeah. Ted Roberts. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> um, 
like in God through the Holy Spirit because the, those things only have the power that we give them. Mm -hmm. And so if we're expecting and examining and preparing for that, then. So I, I think of uh, that old adage that, you know, we probably used to say whenever we were younger, well, my daddy will beat up your <laughs> daddy or my daddy's bigger than your daddy. It, it makes me think of just, and, and you quoted it, when I kneel before the king of heaven, I can stand against or stand to any king on earth. It's just that confidence and that boldness of walking, walking with Jesus and knowing who your daddy is mm -hmm. and having that confidence that no matter what opposition may come, consistently, and you just said it, consistently walking in that confidence of knowing God's got me and I've, yeah. I'm, I'm working through this. This is a process, but I know we're, we're doing this together. So I, I want to go to renovate the gate, but just on the way there. What are the ways that we kneel before the King of Heaven? Because that was fun to preach, and, sure. and a few people clapped, and a few people woke up. But um, <laughs> when I kneel before the King of Heaven, what does that look like? Well, it looks like meditating on God's Word. Mm -hmm. It looks like learning Scripture. And I'm not talking about just memorizing it for a moment. I mean learning it, like reviewing the ones that you used to know and then really getting them in your system it, it looks like worshiping driving down the road, whether you sync your phone and you are playing the right songs um, or, or you whatever. Whatever that looks like for you, it looks like prayer, worship, and God's Word. Yeah. That is kneeling before the King of Heaven so that when opposition arises, and sometimes opposition is your sin nature. Yeah. Opposition is your desire to stay comfortable instead of getting outside of your comfort. Opposition is my own yep. sinful Flesh. temptations. Okay, so when those things arise, the devil met Jesus. Lucifer, literally, Lucifer, not like a devil, like not with, the devil's just messing with, no, no, no. Like literally, Lucifer met Jesus, and Lucifer tried to use God's word. But Jesus was so familiar with the word that he was able to fight that temptation back directly with a absolute biblical truth, even in the face of a counterfeit biblical truth. That's how well he knew the word. Yep. You only get that if you've been kneeling before the king and meditating. Not just you heard it one time, not just memorizing so that you can quote it to some but you've been meditating yeah. on God's Word and letting the Holy Spirit say what He needed to say. Final thought or a thought off of that? I mean, that was yeah, I mean, on the, it, you've got to be familiar with it in order to spot the counterfeit. And I've shared this example before, but working at the bank, eventually I got to the point where I could be counting money really fast and feel, feel the counterfeit without even looking. I could be looking at my computer screen or something, but it's just that familiarity with what it's supposed to feel like right. and what it's supposed to be and the actual characteristics of it and what it's not, but that only comes through time. Renovate the gate, my favorite thought, my favorite my favorite point. I was writing a, a bunch of notes down. Um, <laughs> right I was here. preaching my own sermon. <laughs> so this I, Wednesday night. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I immediately thought of, and you even referenced some HGTV, some, some fixer upper stuff, uh, hometown. I, I immediately thought of that, that old saying, and I thought of, uh, it's one of those things that you think is scripture, but it's not, right? Yeah. The eyes are the gateway to the soul. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's in, nope, nope, that's not scripture. That's literally a saying, but in Matthew chapter six, it is. It says yeah. the, the eye is the light lamp. of your soul, the yeah. lamp. It, and so, and I, I was just thinking about that, like the, the light and the lamp is what gives clarity to your path. Mm -hmm. It is what's going to expose the darkness in our marital uh, uh, better together conference this weekend. Even Pastor Megan talked about how, like, literally, the devil cannot work in the light. Like, and so I, I don't know about y'all, but I want to make sure that everything that that I see, that I look at, that I'm feeding myself, is is literally through the lens of Jesus in His light. So renovating those things that are like, oh, no, that's an examination. I need to make sure that, all right, I'm exposing that. I'm exposing that, what what the enemy has had hidden in the darkness. I'm exposing that. God, get that. I need you to renovate that in mm -hmm. my life. And the, the cool part about renovating is that there's some type of foundation there. Mm -hmm. There's some type of structure, yeah. but living in 
in America and in Western culture, which at one point was was synonymous with a Christian society and a Christian culture, and, and we're now living in what they call the post-Christian society. Um, there is some sort of people in America inherently have that idea of what's right and what's wrong because it's just been so saturated in our culture. Now you can choose to reject that, right? But you at least have an idea of where to start and what not to look at and what not to hear. But you have to put the time in to be able to remove the things that don't need to be there. So there probably are some good things in there, being at church, listening to worship music, you know, watching, po- uh, listening to podcasts, watching right. sermons online, those types of things. But those other things that we're supplementing in there, if you, if you look on your phone, pretty much everybody's phone has these well-being reports, right? And it shows you how much screen time you have, how many... Minutes or hours for spending really? specific apps, all of that kind of stuff. iPhones may not. I know Samsung. Screen does. time. It's it's considered. Yeah. It's called the screen. Yeah, time. and so it just oh, shows. Use the right verbiage. <laughs> but but mine's like all encompassing. <laughs> it shows it shows everything about your phone. So it's not just screen time. Yeah. Um, and so you can look at all of that, and it's been challenging for me lately. And I, we use our phone a lot for work, making phone calls, text yeah. messages, doing different things. But then when I look back, and last week. It says my phone was being used for 30 hours during the week. Wow. Okay, how much of that was really me doing work? And how much of that was like I was just mindlessly on my phone, you know, in the afternoon and the evenings, first thing in the morning, whatever it may be. And so I've been checking that, and it's really been challenging me. Okay, like, what am I really putting in? Okay, I know I start pretty much every day off with worship and word. Right. But is it 30 hours worth of worship and word compared to what else I'm doing? And so that examining for me has been like helping me renovate and move yeah. some of that stuff out. Final thoughts? You, you I, I, go ahead. Yeah, no. I, so the last last things that I, I wrote down whenever you're talking about renovation was, was mainly in construction, when you're renovating, you want to make sure the foundation is the best, right? It, that, that that is fixed up and firmed up. But the little details that oftentimes when it comes to re, restructuring and things like that is – you make sure that the windows are together and they have locks and the doors do as well because you don't want to fix up this nice house but then rain weather enemies come in burglars come in and mess up all the things that you've done well and I am a product and you mentioned this and Nehemiah did this uh, not only for his past fathers whose graves were there but for Jesus in the future I am a product of my grandparents moving forward and making sure that the structure of our family was shored up. And I am a product today, husband, father, pastor, man of God, like I am that because of them, because they shored that up. So it just goes to show you just the the tenacity in which people go about making sure that your foundation is shored up and you're renovating the gates that need to be uh, made whole will ultimately impact your future and the future of your your generation your family my great great grandfather was a southern baptist pastor my great grandfather sold sold his business which ultimately turned into a multi-million dollar business the person that bought it but I mean, who wants multi-millions, right? But he sold his business because he realized for him, this was the examination or the renovation for him. He realized that for him, he could not run that business the way that he had been running it and be the man of God that he sensed. He was being drawn and burdened to be. So he closed that gate. Now he opened new gates. Sure. And he renovated new gates. But he made sure that that one for him was locked up um this week we're going to go more into the the building of the wall and just letting you know ahead of time i said this i believe we need to build walls we need to have boundaries we need to have gates and guardrails but i think they need to be made of plexiglass so that people can see right through them so that it's a an example of who we are we're not building hedges to hide behind them we are building walls not to just keep people out but to show people, for people to be able to see what it looks like to live life uh, fulfilled even with specific boundaries. So uh, go read your YouVersion devotional for the week, and uh, we hope to see. Don't forget about our midweek as well. We post that on Wednesday nights. We're in Acts chapter 13, 
and uh, several things going on on campus. And attend your small groups, yeah, really yeah. important. Attend your small groups, and if you're in Freedom Group, that registration is online. Serve Day is online. Water Baptism is online. Come on. We are an active church that is alive and ready. We'll see you this week.